Hello. Today I would like to talk about the diagnostic approach to the nephrotic syndrome. And this approach can also be used for the diagnosis of a isolated proteinuria. As we know, nephrotic syndrome includes a proteinuria of more than 3 grams a day, hypoalbuminemia of less than 30 grams per liter, as well as edema. All three must be present for us to diagnose nephrotic syndrome. Hypercholesterolemia is an association, but is not part of the diagnostic criteria. The commonest cause of nephrotic syndrome in an adult is diabetes mellitus. This must be excluded in any adult patient with nephrotic syndrome. The second commonest cause of nephrotic syndrome in an adult would be glomerular disease. And this includes minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, and membranous nephropathy. Each of these histological subtypes have got primary causes or secondary causes. Primary causes being an unknown cause, while secondary causes may be due to other factors. Secondary causes of minimal change disease is relatively rarer, but has been associated with blood-borne malignancies such as leukemias, as well as drugs such as NSAIDs. In secondary, secondary FSGS, it may be an adaptive FSGS. This is an adaptation to nephron loss, such as previous uh, glomerular damage, previous uh, renal conditions, uh, nephrectomy, or it may be due to morbid obesity. It can also be due to infections such as HIV, CMV, parvovirus B19, and some other rarer infections. It can also be due to drugs, which includes interferon therapy, pemidronate, and illicit drugs such as cocaine and heroin. In membranous nephropathy, secondary causes include hepatitis B infection, drugs, typical drugs would be the DMATs such as gold and penicillamine, although a whole long list of drugs has been implicated in membranous nephropathy. It could also be due to lupus, class 5, and finally, it can be secondary to malignancies. And this is usually associated with solid organ tumours such as lung CA, breast cancer, colonic cancer. Other causes which may present in a manner somewhat similar like a nephrotic syndrome would include an overflow proteinuria. This usually is a manifestation of multiple myeloma, in that there's so much immunoglobulins in the blood that it overflows into the urine. Lastly, it may be due to an infiltrative condition. An example of which would be amyloidosis. And this can also be a primary amyloidosis or a secondary amyloidosis. This is a summary of an approach to the nephrotic syndrome. I hope it's useful in your future approach to any patient with similar presentation. Thank you.